Hey everybody, Han Turkey here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, actress, host, lifestyle, tech expert, Chilan Liu. Chilan. Hey Hans, good Thank to see you. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm great, how are you? Very good, very good. Thank you. So how did you get started in the, the lifestyle tech expert well, career? Well, from a young age, I've always wanted to work in television. I just felt like I had this voice, I had these opinions, and I wanted to share them with everyone. So when I was young, I just decided that I wanted to work and the obvious avenue was to be a producer. I really wanted to be an editor, actually. Um, but as I moved into the direction of working in TV behind the scenes, um, they pushed me into producing. And so I became a writer and producer. And I branded and rebranded a bunch of TV shows as well as TV channels. And from there, uh, I was headhunted and um, brought up to San Francisco to rebrand a network called Tech TV, which no longer exists. Tech TV um, was bought out by G4 TV. And then G4 TV turned into Spike, which then uh, in turn, I, forget, I think now it's um, Details TV or, or, you know, a men's lifestyle magazine TV. Um, anyhow, so that's what happened to that. Um, so from there, working as a, as a writer producer in the promos department, I just knew a lot of people that were constantly doing videos for the channel because it was a 24-hour network all about technology, all about the new tech, the old tech, the news that's making that's making the world go around in technology. And so they always needed people on the camera. They were like, well, you're off at 5.30, can you come and shoot this with me? And I was like, sure, why not? And so I also had an amazing mentor there, and he said, you know, you should really try this on air thing. And I never considered it at that point. I was always behind the camera, and um, I said to myself, well, I don't want to wake up when I'm 40, and this was many years before I was 40, and say, I didn't try something. So I tried it, and I have to tell you that um, even with my mentor support, it was the most challenging thing in the world. If you've only worked behind the scenes, and you've only written and you've only produced, it works a completely different part of your brain. And I thought, this is really quite difficult. So because it was so difficult, I felt like it would be a really interesting stretch if I went and tried it. Did any of that uh, experience help you get on the CBS show, The Talk? Um, well, the way that The Talk actually happened, I think it was like a lead up with a lot of different things, mm -hmm. right? So from Tech TV, um, I became a tech reporter. That was how I got my start as a tech reporter. Um, and I would do a lot of stories about just what was happening with technology, a lot of like consumer goods, things like that. So the fact that I learned how to review consumer goods was a really good thing. The fact that I put together stories and I didn't focus on myself because first of all, when you start on air, you hate the way that you look on camera. You hate the way that you sound on camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I could not see myself like on camera any more than two seconds. And when I put my reel together for my mentor, it was literally just a story that I put together, like a review of some item. And I was literally on camera, not even speaking. It was just my voiceover with two seconds of me in B-roll. And for those that know what B-roll oh, right. is, I'm just playing with an item for two seconds. And I was like, <laughs> cut away from it. So that was pretty interesting. <laughs> so the way that the CBS thing happened was that I had, at that point, I think I had hosted um, three series for HGTV. Um, I'd done a bunch of their specials. I had um, also done like a trend spotting show for CW called CW Now. And I've done a lot of entertainment reporting. Because once I moved from San Francisco, you moved down to LA. And a lot of what happens down here is all about entertainment. It's all junkets and red carpets and things that happen for movies, uh, for lovers of movies, things like that. So I started doing that. And um, but still some of my tech videos that must have existed online somewhere. So one of the producers, they found me. And then they, they emailed me and I was like, this must be a prank because they didn't go through my agent. Uh, <laughs> so they just like emailed me and I was like, this can't be for real. But it says, you know, producer named, uh, producer last name at CBS.com. I was like, all right, I'll give it a go, whatever. So um, I went there and I killed it. So I did really well. They liked me. They liked the vibe that I had. The fact that I make tech tangible to a lot of people. And they were like, well, you do a lot of other stuff. And I said, yeah, I'm actually going into lifestyle space so I'm a lifestyle expert because with all of the experience of HGTV it's not just technology you're not just talking about tech you're not just talking about CPS because how often does CPS happen it happens once a year you know so then I broadened out my, my reach and at that point you always have to figure out what's happening in terms of television and what type of expertise they're looking for it's fads like anything else there are fads there are trends right now the big trend and it's strong trend is not reality stars, it's actors becoming TV hosts. So um, with the HGTV experience, I became like a really, um, you know, uh, I became a fairly
fairly okay known TV host, um, as well as technology expert. So when the talk needed a technology expert and they didn't like the person that they had brought on previously, it was a it was a older gentleman. Um, they were like, you relate a little bit better. Do you want to come back and do some more stories? So I pitched them a bunch of stories um, and with the products and this and that, and, and it was a really good fit. And then from there, we moved into um, integrations and things like that. All right. Now, one show I remember you on, uh-huh. where I found you, yes. is Factor Fake Paranormal. Yes. Uh-huh. With what you told me, how did they find you to do that and integrate what you know on that show? So, Factor Faked Paranormal was a very special time in my career. Um, it was actually a self-submission, I remember. And I was like, because I've always loved like the paranormal, and I, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I have a degree in photography. Like, I love photography, and I was really, really strong in photography. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I could, I'm amazing. I was really good at the dark room, um, knew all of the chemistry, knew how to print anything. Um, and the way that that came about was they were just looking for people with interest in the paranormal. I was like, that's me. Spooks me. But it's still me. Um, So I auditioned for it, just like anyone else did. And um, I ended up booking it, which is a surprise. And I thought the show wouldn't go anywhere because what they were asking for was, like, a lot of days and, you know, this and that and a lot of travel. And I thought, all right, I'll just do it for six weeks. It's not like the show's going to come back. Because how often does the show go to series? Like, almost never. I've done so many pilots that I'm like, this one is it. This is going to go to series. It's so high end. It's going to be distributed. It's going to be syndicated, da, 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 da. But for some reason, this show, my agent was like, this isn't going to go anywhere. Just, you know, just sign the contract. It's fine. Just do it. And then you got the six episodes. And I signed it. And I was like, all right, you know, we'll try it. Um, it, was a, it was an ensemble cast. And so we did it. And um, it went and it went and it went. And it was really, really successful. And the way that they gave me the photography expert um, title was because I told them I'm actually better known as a technology expert than I am photographer. You know? Um, and they said, yes, we have a technology person. We really need, you know, we really like the fact that you're a photography expert. Which way I do that. And I was like, yeah, but not a lot of people know that I have such a strong background in photography. So the problem is you're going to have to build that in somehow. Yeah. But it worked out really great because it let me kind of explore um, just like something that I've always been passionate about, something that I really, really love, you know? So that was a lot of fun. Do you have any memorable experiences being on that show? Anything that really, really happened? Or did you have something real here? I was trying to remember, there was this one place that spooked pretty much everyone, and it was the place where, okay, so you're, you're, you're in these places, there was this one place that was like specifically haunted, I'm trying to remember, it was a museum, I'm trying to remember if it was perhaps Washington State or where I was, because we traveled so much, we traveled so often, um, and at the same time I was also doing another show where I traveled internationally as well, and I, <laughs> I cannot keep this straight, but it was, um, it was a very old museum. one of those places where like uh, I, I don't frighten as easily however I would not go to the bathroom alone so I made a PA I don't know because a lot of them are like they're just you know, uh, I made the PA I was like I'm sorry you can have to stand outside the bathroom I go to the bathroom because I just need someone to be close to me like within four feet yeah so in case something happens I can just scream to you <laughs> like you have to stand outside in this whole museum floor by yourself I'm gonna go to the small room of the bathroom I'm gonna be right now Right back. And then we'll, we'll escort each other back to the set. Wow. So that I remember that episode, too, with the piano key going mm-hmm. off. And, hey, I mean, I have a lot of paranormal stories, too, as you can imagine. So mm-hmm. I'll have to tell you what happened to me the other day. <laughs> we get off camera. Um, going back to lockdown, how yeah. often do you have to tape that a week? So um, it's a show that's live four days out of the week. They have five episodes a week. And usually... sometimes so how long is the show so the schedule for the talk is um i really enjoy it i mean it's a little bit early for a lot of people there's a lot of waiting around to get around to the show but it just allows me to like time to 
to relax, get a nap Absolutely. in because I have a baby. Yep. <laughs> so my call time is usually between um, 7 and 7.30 and then we'll rehearse at 8, 8 to about 8.50 because we have like placements of things, stand-ins, mm -hmm. lighting. Oh, yes. um, you by the way, second team the lighting person? people is, they're amazing at the top. The lighting team is phenomenal. I mean, they've won Emmys and they frankly like deserve more than just, you know, a couple Emmys for a couple of years. They deserve an Emmy for the um, so it's it's a lot of that. It's a lot of placement, and then it's walking through things, making sure the director knows where I'm going to go, and I know where I'm going to go because everything is new. Whenever they place it out, because they do such a good job in terms of like set design and things like that, you have to know where you're going to go while you're speaking about it, while you're speaking as if this is just like coming off the top of your head, and you know what I mean. Yeah. So um, rehearsal takes a little bit, so it's just walking through the product. So I usually am down there rehearsing, or maybe not even rehearsing. We literally just do the rehearsal and because the segment takes about six minutes, the rehearsal will be about six minutes. But the rest of the stuff that leads up to the rehearsal to make sure that you can be on point for the rehearsal takes a little bit longer. So sometimes I'm waiting down there at eight o'clock um, until 8.30, until 8.40, and then we do the rehearsal, and then nine o'clock I'm back upstairs, and then we're in hair and makeup, and then 11 o'clock the show starts live, and then um, I go on usually, I go downstairs around 11.20 or 11.30 to get mic, and then boom, I'm done by 12. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> You're out. I go to Trader Joe's, or I go, uh, <laughs> or I go straight home to feed my baby. That's it. I rarely go to Trader Joe's, but I did find out that there was a Trader Joe's in this for many years. <laughs> I've been yep. on the show for like eight seasons, or no, seven seasons, and I just found out there's a Trader Joe's this season. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, the McDonald's is now gone, and they have a different. It's a grocery store now. Oh, it's really? Like Shield Farms or something. Oh, uh, Mendocino. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Mendocino. A Mendocino Farms. Farms. Yeah. Um, so going going forward, do you have any goals or aspirations that you want to accomplish this year and beyond? And where can people see uh, some of the work you have links or anything like that? Yeah, I have a ton of links. <laughs> you can always see me on top, on the top of course. Um, I will hopefully be starting up an actual YouTube channel and doing things. Uh, but in terms of where I see myself, like my passion and my goal has always been to share my experience and you know my the lens with which I view. changing so rapidly it's difficult to say I want to do a talk show because for the longest time I said I want to do a talk show mm -hmm. I want to be on Good Morning America or Today Show or something like that where I get to share my experiences with people people can look to me as a trusted figure and know that what I'm talking about is real or like understand that I came from the same background that they came from things like that you know because one of the things about being on TV is you know you you, you personify this you know aspirational being that looks like needs workers. Uh, we found out a couple years ago <laughs> the government can also furlough workers. So um, it was challenging to break out of that mindset and I think that that's one thing that I want to share with people that you can literally be whatever you want to be. You know, and I approve of that. You are. So that's kind of the angle that I want to take my voice in and to share with people and to create content where people can say like, you know, she did it, I can do it too, but I really like sharing my experience with her, I like that she shares her experience with me, you know, so it's, it's like a nice relationship. That's awesome. Very well said. Do you have any advice that you would like to give to people that are aspiring to be a TV host, a tech expert, a lifestyle expert, anything you'd like to tell them? Well, if you want to do it, you just go out and do it. That's it. That's what it takes. <laughs> there you go. Simple enough. Jalan, thank you so much. Thank you for jumping on today. Good to see you. Please go down to the links below, support Jalan's career, watch her on the talk. Thank you again for joining me and Jalan today for another interview. This is Hans Harkey signing off.